Welcome to Sound and Fury Book Reviews. As usual, I am Tina. Today I'm doing a book review of Oceans Go Dory by Elaine Yu Cho. This is a book coming out April 23rd, 2023. It's a sci-fi from Hillman Grad Books. I received this book from NetGalley in exchange for a fair review. As nuanced and reflective as it is exciting and fun, Oceans Go Dory is perfect for fans of Firefly. And no, I don't say that lightly. I know books often get this comparison, but I will explain later why I think this actually fits for this book. <laughs> so what is this book about? Ocean Yoon has never felt like much of a Korean, even if she is descended from a long line of Henyo, Jeju Island's beloved female divers. She's also persona non grata at the Alliance, Korea's solar system dominating space agency, since a mission went awry and she earned a reputation for being a little too quick with her gun. When her best friend Tio, son of the Anon Tech Empire, is framed for murdering his family, Ocean and her misfit crewmates are pushed to the forefront of a high-stakes ideological conflict. But dodging bullets and winning space chases may be the easiest part of what comes next. This has nothing to do with the story, but I actually worked for seven years in high school and university at a small mom and pop video store. That Gen Z's is a place where you got your movies before streaming was invented. <laughs> where the owners were Korean. As such, I was around the language a lot as they spoke to one another almost exclusively in it. They used to bring me the best, best food. I'd get kimchi and various other stuff, but my favorite were these little rainbow colored rice cake things. I don't know what they're called anymore. I wish I did. <laughs> They'd always bring me a bunch when they visited family. So reading this book was like being back at the video store because there are a lot of Korean words and culture aspects woven into the novel. It also made me very happy that I was reading it on my tablet because I could just click on the word and look it up on Wikipedia and be like, oh, okay, translation time. <laughs> it was kind of nostalgic for me in a way because the video store was like a third home for me. In fact, I spent more time there than my actual homes. I had two because my parents were divorced. I worked, I think, like 40s a week for eight hour shifts. So I was there a lot. And then, you know, when crap happened to me, like when I got in a fender bender or I got a bad grade at school, things like that, I went to them for help instead of my own parents. Hope my parents aren't watching this. They also used to get awesome Korean movies in the store here and there, like the original Old Boy and Shiri and some horror movies. So that was great too. I, I, I really actually really miss working there. It was, it was a great kind of point in my life. Personal anecdotes over. This is a novel that I found took me a bit to get into, but by about a third of the way through, I understood what it was doing and how it functioned. It's kind of like a rock rolling downhill, to use a you know, cliche phrase. Once it starts, it doesn't stop. This is mainly because the Firefly crew aspects don't arrive until about halfway through the story, which is when I became really engaged with it. The characters played off one another, both antagonisms and attractions, in a way that was very much like Firefly, and these interactions were more engaging than the plot. <laughs> The reason it takes so long to build to this point is because Ocean is very aloof, even to the rear, and kind of too perfect. You know, she's a crack shot, she's an ace pilot, she's a graceful dancer, she's beautiful, she's brave, etc. So she's kind of hard to empathize with because she seems a bit flawless up until almost the very end. Tio is a smarmy rich kid, you know, not a character archetype I gravitate to, and Haven's deal isn't really explained, so it's hard to know whether to sympathize with him or find him kind of like a weirdo. <laughs> As such, I wasn't particularly invested in them as people for the first bit of the story. It was more so the world building and graceful language that kept me reading until I gradually became invested in them as their backstories unfurled. So I guess what I'm trying to say is if you're about like 15% in and you're not feeling it, keep going until about, I don't know, 35% or so because that's when it really, really starts to come together and it gets really, really interesting. <laughs> Not a lot of is explained in this book also, at least in a straightforward way. We aren't explicitly told much, so we're left to fetter out the way of the universe and the character's backstory from the bits and pieces we are given. The reason for this, I believe, is because the novel is attempting to show how the micro and macro facets of our existence and how we see ourselves shape our choices. So much of the characterization and choices the characters make in this novel are based not just on their actions they took in the past, but their family, their history, and their culture. There's also colonialism and the exploitive nature of capitalism thrown in there as well, so there's kind of a lot going on. This is another way in which the book is like Firefly, as that show also broached themes of colonialism and capitalism, albeit in a different way. This book is smart, and it doesn't hold your hand, but it's also exciting, fun, and it has some great sexual tension. I did find the action scenes a bit didactic at times, almost passive in some instances, but I mean, everything else was so interesting. <laughs> 
The book ends on a cliffhanger, both regarding a romance and a plot. I'm not sure if this is supposed to lead into book two or some sort of, or if it was some sort of artsy ending, but either way, it was far too abrupt for me. When it comes to the one romance, I saw other reviewers wondering if it would progress into a love triangle, but I'm guessing if we do get more books, which I hope we totally do, because I totally would read them, <laughs> it would be more of a polyamorous thing rather than a, um, a love triangle, hopefully, hopefully, because love triangles are awful. I will say I did appreciate the Street Fighter and Jurassic Park references. Those were quite fun. <laughs> Overall, I very much enjoyed this interesting space opera. I totally read the second book if there is one and definitely more from this author. If you want a sci-fi that's a little bit different, I totally recommend checking it out. Also, the cover is super cool. Isn't it fun? <laughs> so yeah, thank you to the publishers and to Net Pally for the e-arc. I really appreciate it.